Hi, I'm Leanne Walker and I'm the Classroom with Outdoors educator in uh, the Elk Valley South Country area and I am going to demonstrate to you today the magic tricks that we talked about on the conference call yesterday. So the first magic trick is used in the grade 4 program, uh, the magic of ecosystems or the magic of nature, talking about disappearing act. So for this magic trick, the things that you need is you need a thumb tip and you need a 12 inch square silk scarf. And I posted the um, site that you can get these at. I use the yellow scarf for talking about grasslands. I use the, a green scarf for talking about forests and I use a blue scarf for talking about wetlands. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the, how I use this as part of the, the disappearing act. So um, I talk about um, the grasslands. So when early settlers moved to Canada, endless grasslands, they crossed over endless grasslands from Manitoba through Saskatchewan, Alberta, and even through the valleys of British Columbia. But not over 90% of those grasslands today have disappeared. So what has happened to all those grasslands? So you'll notice right now, or I'm gonna just demonstrate the magic trick. So what has happened to those grasslands? So grasslands are flat areas. So they're easy areas to build roads and railways. They're also easy areas for urban development. So some of those have been covered up with houses. We've plowed many of the grasslands under for agriculture and used them for domestic livestock. They make excellent places for golf courses. People have um, b driven around in the grasslands with ATVs and ripped up the soils and now there's noxious weeds. Even climate change has desertified a lot of the grasslands. So in time, where have those grasslands gone? They've largely disappeared. So how do I do that magic trick? I'm just gonna go back to the magic trick itself. So I've got, you'll notice, the thumb tip on my thumb and I'm right-handed. So I've got the thumb tip and when I'm talking about it, I'm sort of covering it up with the silk scarf. It's also flesh covered so the students can't really see it because they're sitting in the class. This is usually um, something that I do in the classroom at the end as part of my wrap up. So I'm going to take the, the thumb tip, I'm putting it inside my other hand. So now you'll notice you can't see it, but you have this void in, inside your other hand. As you're speaking and talking about the various human impacts, okay, so roads, railways, I'm using different fingers of this hand to stuff the silk scarf inside. I'm talking about golf courses, noxious weeds, desertification, and the last time I push the scarf in, I'm using my thumb again and I push it in really hard, and then it disappears, okay? So then I take the thumb, put it into my hand, and as I sweep my hand down, I'm just gonna stick it in the pocket of my vest or in my pocket very carefully and quickly so that when I go back to talking to the students, I no longer am holding it in my hand. So that's how you do the disappearing act. And the thumb tip is about $8 and each of the scarves are four and you know you can expedite it and get that sent to you as soon as you can. Okay, so the second magic trick, just let's keep going, it's all right. The second magic trick is used in the illusion of interconnectedness. And again, this is a part of the wrap up activity. So I'm, gonna, I'm talking to the students about how, what does an ecosystem consist of? Plants and animals that interact with each other in their non-living environment. So to do this magic trick, I have a nice slippery rope. Um, you don't want to really um, 
you know, coarse rope. So something like climbing rope works well or this kind of slippery uh, rope. Okay, so this is an interactive magic trick. So you're asking the students questions and they're giving you feedback. So what are the non-living ingredients required for, for ecosystems to form? And I'm expecting to hear from the students, you know, sun, soil, air, and water. So I'm going to cast on my first component. So you'll notice I've got it draped over my hand. And basically it's like crocheting and your finger is like the crochet hook. So I'm going to go under my thumb, grab the string, twist it, and cast on to my finger. Okay, and then I'm going to tidy it all up. Okay, so once we have the non-living ingredients in place, then we have the right conditions for the plants. And what do we call the plants in the ecosystem? The producers. Okay, so I'm taking my crochet hook. I'm going to go under, grab the cord on top, pull it under this twist, cast on to the next finger, and now I'm going to tidy it up again. Okay, so once we have consumers, then other um, living things uh, will appear, that the animals that need the energy from the plants. So what do we call the group of animals? They're the consumers. So then under, grab the string on the back of your hand, twist it, cast on. Okay, tidy it up. Okay, you always want to keep it tidy and tight. Okay, and then everything that's living will once die. And the world is not covered with dead and dying things because of the, what, what's recycling all that energy and nutrients. Decomposers. So we bring, again, underneath, grab, twist, cast on. Okay, so we have all the components of our ecosystems. The non-living ingredients that set the stage, the producers, the consumers, and the producers, the consumers, and the decomposers. So if all those components are there, an ecosystem is really um, resilient to, to change, and it's very strong. So I walk up to a student and I ask, try to, um, you know, try to change this ecosystem if all these components are in place. So I ask a student, pull on one cord, pull on the other cord, maybe try pulling up both cords and it's really tight, it's very strong and resilient to change because all of the components are there for a strong ecosystem. But if one piece goes missing, and I do this very quickly, okay, I'm grabbing this string that's on the under part of your hand, I'm dropping the stitch off my thumb and at the same time pulling this cord and the whole ecosystem unravels. So that way, you know, the students, they don't see the sleight of hand as you drop the, th the stitch off your thumb and it unravels and they're like, oh, how did you do that? So I'm going to demonstrate it one more time just the casting on. So you've got your string on the back of your hand. Okay, you're going to start with the non-living ingredients. Your little crochet hook goes under between your thumb and your, your pointer. You grab the string, you pull it through, twist, cast on, tighten. Okay, the producers underneath the string, grab on the back, twist, cast on, tidy it up, Get it nice and tidy, keep it nice and tidy. Under the finger, for the consumers, grab the string, twist, cast on. Okay, decomposers, under, between the fingers, grab, twist, cast on. So you've got the non-living, producers, consumers, decomposers, the strength 
and resilience is in all the components. The students pull on one, the other, both. It's very strong, but if one component goes missing, like say soil from erosion, or water from climate change, or a species at risk disappears, boom, the whole ecosystem can unravel. So that it, those are the two magic tricks that we can add to our 2013 program.